Tahuka Nunez of the Wanyeño Band of Mission Indians here to share her cultural heritage. My name is Noreen Kukinen, and I'm honored to be the worship associate for our service this morning. Carol Cole, our music director, will provide the beautiful music for our hymns, and Pam Floodman and Don West are handling the complicated technical tasks of our hybrid services. Thank you so much for all the help that you give to this service and all of our services, and to all the others within this fellowship who do so much. We're small, but dedicated. And we're happy to see new members today. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, is there anybody who would like to introduce themselves before we continue? Well, we are very pleased you're here. Thank you for coming. The Native American dance that we viewed in our gathering video was performed by Jackson Tahuka Nunez, the son of our guest speaker. The chicken dance is one of the oldest forms of Native American dancing. It was inspired by the story of a warrior who went out hunting, <clears throat> excuse me, hunting to find dinner for his family. He came upon some prairie chickens. They were engaged in their mating dance and he shot one with an arrow. When the chicken later appeared to him in a dream that night, the warrior offered his sincere apology and his gratitude for the food his family ate that night. The chicken understood the man's needs and in appreciation taught him the sacred dance of the prairie chicken. Today, members of Native American nations participate in this wonderful ritual. Dancers like Jackson Nunez preserve the ancient ways and give us an opportunity to appreciate and respect their tradition. For thousands of years, long before European colonization of the Amer Americas began, the Ahashaman people of the San Juan Capistrano area safeguarded land, language, spirit, knowledge, and tradition over generations. For them, as for native people across the continent, much wealth of knowledge was swept aside when the missionaries and colonists arrived, and later when our federal policies sought to assimilate and displace Native people and eradicate Native cultures. Finally, at last, the culture, the rich culture, and the contributions of Native peoples throughout history are receiving greater respect and honor. Today, we'll learn more about our local indigenous people from our speaker. Jackie has played a big part in preserving the history of her peoples through the oral Native American tradition of storytelling. We will celebrate with Jackie the contributions and resilience of her ancestral Ahashaman lineage. This congregation is open to all who are in accordance with our principles, mission, and vision. We unconditionally, unconditionally welcome any and all of you to our community of mutual caring and serious intent to grow as spiritual and moral beings. We gather because we share the same values and we can help each other to lead a meaningful, purposeful life. Our first two principles of the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship express our belief in the inherent worth and dignity of all people and our pursuit, pursuit of justice, equity, and compassion in our relations with other people. These principles are the foundation of this service this morning. We have one symbol in our fellowship, uh, the chalice, which stands for illumination. This morning, our member, Paul Bogdan, who does so much for us, has agreed to light the candle in our chalice. We come together on Sunday mornings as people of faith with joys and sorrows, gifts and needs. We light the challenge, we light the chalice as a sign of our search for truth and meaning. Thank you, Paul. Um, <laughs> in words that are found in our hymnal, 
Come into this place of peace and let silence heal your spirit. Come into this place of memory and let its history warm your soul. Come into this place of prophecy and power and let its vision change your heart. Our centering thought this day is from the Ojibwe Nation. Teach us love, compassion, and honor that we may heal the earth and heal each other. Our opening hymn this morning is the oneness of everything. It's number one, excuse me, 1052 in the teal hand, hymnal. So if you um, would like to join us in the sanctuary, please sing. And at home, belt it out. Good morning, everyone. Please join me in one of our very favorite hymns to sing, uh, The Oneness of Everything. Oh 
Carol. It was beautiful. Uh, at this point, our congregation affirms the principles that we share together, our unison affirmation. So let's read together the affirmation of the spiritual goals we share as members of our fellowship. May we be reminded, be reminded here of our highest, of our highest aspirations and inspired, and inspired to bring our gifts of love and service to the altar, the altar of humanity. Of humanity. May we know, May we know once again, again that we are, that we are not isolated, isolated beings, beings connected, but connected, connected in mystery, in mystery and, and miracle, miracle to the to universe, universe, to this to community, and to each, to each other. We are a circle of care where sharing of our joys and sorrows is important. For this part of our service, the recording is stopped. So you are free to express a joy, something that has made you very people. We're all feeling for you as I hope it was a happy one. Um, let's remember what our friends have shared today, um, the people they have named and the sorrows and joys that they hold in silence. A light hand resting on a shoulder, a twinkly eyed smile that floats above a mask. A brief word, there are small ways we can show that we care. Now we move to our commercial. Uh, it's offertory. Our financial contributions to this congregation come from sacrifice and hard work. Generosity is a value we understand is important. We commit together to ensure the funds we gather collectively do a greater good for ourselves and our world than they could have done by themselves. May this offering sustain and grow the life of this congregation. May we give in love and in hope. Please refer to the slide on your screen for ways to contribute. This information is also available in the email that you received to announce the service this morning. Candy will pass the basket within the sanctuary. Please join me in singing our authoritary song. from the youth people of the southwestern region of the North America. Please make yourself comfortable, close your eyes if you wish, and consider the message from this prayer by John Yellow Lark. It's called, Earth Teach Me to Remember. Earth teaches me stillness as the grasses are stilled with light. Earth 
Teach me suffering as old stones suffer with memory. Earth, teach me humility as blossoms are humble with beginning. Earth, teach me caring as the mother who secures her young. Earth, teach me courage as the tree which stands all alone. Earth, teach me limitation as the ant which crawls on the ground. Earth, teach me freedom as the eagle which soars in the sky. Earth, teach me resignation as the leaves which die in the fall. Earth, teach me regeneration as the seed which rises in the spring. Earth, teach me to forget myself as melted snow forgets its life. Earth, teach me to remember kindness as dry fields weep with rain. Our speaker this morning is Jackie Tahuka Nunez. She has a very long list of accomplishments from a lifetime spent sharing her Ahashaman ancestral history through the oral Native American tradition of storytelling. Jackie had over 17 years teaching at the elementary level where she honed her skills. In recent years, she has worked as a cultural consultant for the Indian Cultural Center and the Justice Center in Santa Rosa, California, creating educational materials that reflect an act accurate history of California's indigenous people. She has partnered this year with UCI to bring cultural activities and lessons to undo racism for students at Sage Hill High School. Jackie has also shared her stories at multiple Southland venues and recently taped and performed an original story on PBS children's television, creating a series of children's books in the process. Jackie was named Educator of the Year earlier in November by Puku, I'm saying it wrong, that would be Native American organization at their annual event, Evening of the Stars. She continues her lessons and workshops to schools throughout OC through her partnership with Segerstrom Performing Arts Center. Jackie resides in San Juan Capistrano with her husband, Ed Nunez, who perhaps you met outside today, and their children and is widely respected in her home community. Welcome to Jackie. Don, can you ask the speaker to speak into the mic? I'm so grateful to be here today. And I've just, I will just make sure. Okay. Second. I had no idea that you wanted one. But um, in our way, when we are asked to come somewhere, we always want to honor the person that requests our presence. So this is our basket weaving kit. We do have some available outside, but I started this about 23 years ago. My intention was to teach all the teachers in Orange County how to weave baskets. And after two in services, one teacher leaned over and she said, just make them and we'll sell them, or you can sell, we'll buy them. She said, you make them, we'll buy them, because teachers didn't have time to make the starts. So anyway, I'm gonna gift that, and, and our card is in there. If you happen to buy one today, if you go to my web, uh, uh, my email, we'll send you a visual uh, instruction. So you just click it on. So thank you so much for all the work back and forth that we did. Where are my children? Come on up, my darlings, come on. Oh, she's gonna, write. All right, you've got to light a candle. And then how about my boy over there? Come on up, come on up. Oh, she's gonna light a candle too. Okay, but would you come up and do something for me? While he's standing up here with me, come on up here, babe. What's your name, love? Henry. Well, Henry, I'm gonna tell you something. We're gonna watch a little slide right now. And I want everyone to just look at it. I created it so a teacher could kind of see what it might be like to be in a village. And Henry, while they're watching it, I'm going to dress you like a hunter. 
All right. So if we could have the video right now. Oh, come on up. Bring the kids up here. There we go. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? Hi, 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 ho. Hey, 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 ho. Hi, 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 ho. Hey, 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 ho. Oh, 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 palo. Oh, 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 palo. Moela. Hemet. He quiero paja. Hi, 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 ho. Hey, 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 ho. Hi, 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 ho. Hey, 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 ho. Oh, 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 palo. Oh, 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 palo. Moela. Hemet. He quiero pajala. E quero pala, e quero pala. When I go to schools, I teach them that we did not play the drum. We did not play the drum, we played rattles. And when I show them this, which is a deer toenail rattle, most children go, ew. And I say, uh-uh, I want you to say, ah. And my little children here and any out there and even the adults, put your finger here, look at this deer toenail rattle and say, hmm, that's different. And that deserves respect and understanding. Only the men were able to play the deer toenail rattle. And here's a rattle that comes from my people from the coast. And we take a, a shell and we put some rocks in it. Listen. Would you like to hold this? Okay. Henry, you come up and you get to hold this one. I'm going to give you something. Oh, come on up. You, you, oh, here. <laughs> You get that one. Oh, 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 you stay up here, Henry, stay up here. Come on, you girls, come up here, come on. And I'm gonna let you hold something else. This is a clapper stick. And it gives the heartbeat of our music. So I'll let you hold that. I have another one, don't worry. Turn around, turn around, my, my little one. Let's see, ah, all right. Okay. Oh, well, let's share for right now, okay? You're happy? It's a heartbeat. Yes, it is a heartbeat. All right. So we played clappers, we played rattles, and also we had rattles that came from the deer toenails. So that's a little hard to do it that way. So I'm going to have you go like this. All right. Now we're going to let them play. I'm going to sing, you're going to sing. 
Everyone sing with me. After me. Atimoa atahale. Atimoa atahale. Atahamte hale. We're gonna do it again, but a little louder. Are you ready? Here we go. Good job, guys. Here we go. Atimawa atahale. Atimawa atahale. Atahamte hale. Atahamte hale. Oh, one, two, three. Stop. And everyone go like this. Uh-huh. 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 Try it. Uh-huh. 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 Excellent. Let's give our little darlings here a big hand. You did great. You did great. You can go sit down now. Okay. You did a great job. You did a beautiful job. You did a good job. You can go back to mommy now. Okay. Okay. Good job. Excellent. Well, I was a classroom teacher loving to teach in uh, kindergarten, first, second, third, and then we came home. We had left, I grew up in the Rio Sadobi, and let's start with our um, slides, and I want to show you a little bit about myself, and then I'm going to talk about my basket weaving. So, uh, is it Dawn? Yeah. So right there, has anyone ever been in San Juan Capistrano? Raise your hand. And have you ever walked down the historic street called Los Rios Street? That's named after my great, great, great grandfather, Feliciano Rios, who happened to be the leather jacket soldier who guarded Father Sarah. So yes, I am a mix of the Spanish and then they had nine children and they married into the tribe and that's how I became also a Hashiman, we don't like Juaneño because Father Sarah named us the Juaneño because we had a name for thousands of years before he came here. So I'm going to say it and I'd like you to say it after me. A Hashiman. Say it loud and fast. God bless you. Sort of sounds like a sneeze, but it isn't. And it means the people that sleep in a pile. And we slept in a hut that looked like an igloo upside down with some uh, grass and um, another tribe saw us cuddling together to stay warm. And they said, huh, those are the people that sleep in a pile, a Hashiman. So I always say that my people were the very first cuddlers. Next slide, please. Don, is it Don? Yeah. So today I'm gonna talk about this basket. This is the start of a twining basket and uh, there's a whole message in that, but if you look at the center of it, what I want you to remember this, look at the center and I want you to think about when was the first day in your life that you knew that there was a greater power than your own, whether you call him creator, whether you call him Jesus, whether you call it the universe, mother earth, however you talk to your higher power. For me, I call him Jesus, that's my higher power, but we all have the freedom to be in the world and relate to creator how we see fit in our hearts. Next slide, please. Okay, so at one point in my life, uh, I was asked to create a bigger scale of my storytelling. And I built a village, well, actually my husband under my instruction and my brother, uh, they built a village and we went on tour. We went all over California and there was 14 tribal members in our play that we tried to create a day in the life. And as long as I didn't have them say anything, they were fine. So it was like a one woman show with a living village behind me. You would see women grinding the acorn. We didn't eat corn, we ate acorns. You would see a woman cleaning the grasses for basket weaving. You'd see the chief, you know, whittling some piece of, you know, a tool, or perhaps he was cleaning a deer toenail. And you saw a kicha. And we began to tell the story of our ancestors because when my children, when we came back home 30 years ago, I married a Native American, but he wasn't from my tribe. 
And my husband was from the Seminole Nation and the Tohono O'odham Nation. And he was a drummer at the powwows. So we came together and we had our children and we promised ourselves that we were gonna make sure that our children would really, really, really know their culture. None of my boys cut their hair. They all had long braids. And when they went back to school, it wasn't welcomed. They called them girls. They tried to pull their braids. They always would come towards them with scissors. They wanted to cut their hair off. And the mama bear came out and I went to the school and I said, this school is the school I attended many years ago. That mission across the street is the mission that my ancestors built. And I think I need to explain who my children are and who we are in the community. That day, I told my first uh, story. They wanted me to do it four times. And by the fourth time I told the story, Capistrano Unified School District got a hold of me and I began my new journey telling the story of my ancestors. What did we wear? What did we eat? What made us different than other tribes? And um, so I, I actually told the story and went here and there. I went all over. It is estimated that I've made more than 150,000 baskets in 30 years. And um, we've done the play for 20 years. I've helped create this curriculum because there's nothing more terrible in the eyes of myself and others when we see that a teacher just kind of muddles what is the truth. Um, now, I had to muddle the truth a little bit because I couldn't really wear my traditional dress. If any of you know about the history of a Hashiman, I wouldn't be wearing a top. So I would be wearing a bark skirt but I thought I've got to you know, wear something. So I put this on and I created what I thought was close enough to our regalia. Boys, where's Henry? My Henry, this is what you wore up until the age of 12. What do you see? What do you see? Uh, no, what's in the air here? Do you see anything or nothing? Do you see anything here or nothing? Tell him, boys, man. What was he wearing? Nothing. You wore absolutely nothing up until about age 11 or 12. And then when you got big enough and old enough, um, we, you would wear a, a rabbit fur in the front, you know why, in the back in case you're shy. But mostly this, this weather here in California really lent itself to us just covering ourselves slightly. And what did we eat? Raise your hand if you think that Native Americans in California ate corn. Raise your hand. How many think we ate acorns? Which is a lot different than every other part of the state because everywhere else they ate something different. But acorns had to be gathered. We were basket weavers, we were gatherers. Let's go to the next slide. We might have some, uh, Dawn, if you could move to the next slide for me, that'd be great. I get to, there we go. It's coming up here in a minute. All right, so there's our territory. And one thing that even third grade teachers usually don't know is that there's 117 tribes in California. Uh, and about 25 years ago, there was a legislation that was passed and said no longer would the fourth grade teachers teach just about four tribes. One was in California, one was in Alaska, one was in the Midwest, one was in the Southwest. No, wherever you're living, you teach about those people. You learn how they live. And it changed the world of educators because they had to begin to do research to say, who are the people that live here? Most people don't even know that the people that live in Orange County and are the indigenous people are the Ahashiman, the, the Juanenio. And uh, so let's go to the next slide. So at one point before I started my play, I created a village and I brought people that were real basket weavers. The gentleman that's on, uh, I would say maybe the left, or the right side of your screen made this basket. He lives right here in Laguna Beach. 
His name is Abe Sanchez, and he's a very respected basket weaver. And I was one of the first 30 years ago that chose to wear the basket. We wore the basket, it protected our heads. It also, if we were carrying a strap of our forehead, it protected our forehead. And so I created this living village because I wanted people to begin to see what life was like for my people. And this was under the um, request of Joan Irvine, who now has passed, but she really respected our people. And so this was uh, created on her land here in Orange County. Next slide. So there's another beautiful picture. It's, it's a watercolor and it's if you look at it, you see the whole entire village so busy. The children are in the water, the men are carrying what they've hunted. Some women are, women are grinding acorns. Next slide. And that's my Aunt Juanita. She was the matriarch of the city of San Juan Capistrano. And she carried on stories that no one had ever really done except for Tita Romero and Marion Walking Stick. And my aunt went out and then my mother joined them. And while they were going to the schools, I was going to college. And when I graduated from college, I came back home to San Juan Capistrano. And then my journey began as I began to tell the story. So I follow in the footsteps of, her, of my aunt's wisdom and we always respect our elders. And I knew from her, she had such a gentle, beautiful spirit, but it was okay for me to be myself, which was a little bit more demonstrative in the way that I would share the stories. Next slide, please. There is Abe Sanchez who lives right here in Laguna Beach. And he knows how to gather the plants. That right there happens to be deer grass. And I'm gonna say the names of some plants that we use for basket weaving and you say them after me. Deer grass, willow, tule, yucca. Not yucky, Paul, I said yucca. Oh, just kidding, you said it right. Um, but all of those plants were gathered and then we began to weave our baskets. And look at this beautiful basket. This is woven by Abe Sanchez. And this right here is evidence of the intellect that we had. In a book called Chining Chinish, written of the observations of a padre from the mission, he said many things about us, but one thing that stood like a thorn in my side, he said, those Native Americans are this much smarter than an animal. And when I read that, that just pierced my heart. The thorn was here, my heart was here. And I said, that's not true because this form of basket weaving, which is ancient basket weaving, is a, highest, is, is a high level of mathematics like Fibonacci, where you study the design in the world and you bring it to something like this. There's a lot of math in here, just like there is for rug weaving. And if you can understand a very high level of mathematics, would you say that my people were this much smarter than an animal? Absolutely not. So this is evidence to let children know that not everything that is written is absolutely true. That it is something that we need to discover sometimes on our own. Uh, when I go to colleges and I talk to the students there, often they'll tell me, why didn't I know about all of this? I, I didn't, I knew nothing about this. I knew nothing about the injustice of Native Americans. My own mother, when she was five years old, the government, the diocese, came to the Rio Sadobi, had a conversation with my family. And with a half an hour, my great grandmother came out with the suitcase and my mother left from the Rio Sadobi to Banning, California to a boarding school called St. Boniface. There they sprayed her hair with, she, she remembers it. She didn't tell me the story till I was 17. A big can that they just sprayed. They wrapped her head, her hair with rags. And she said, if I wasn't so dark, they wouldn't have taken me. And my mother left the Rio Zadobi thinking she wasn't beautiful. She left the Rio Zadobi thinking, 
just a, I'm just a dirty Indian. That's what she felt. And when she went there, they separated her from her brother and they never got to visit each other. Thank goodness in the car going over there, they came up with this little system that when I go like this, that means I love you. And when he went like that, that meant he loved her. But they could never show the priests or the nuns that they were communicating because they would be in trouble. I remember my mother crying and as a 17 year old Ahashiman woman, I'd never seen my mother cry ever. My mother was hard. She was definitely more, uh, had a bit more corporal punishment than most of the mothers in Orange County. And I thought that was just her way. But as I began to study my mother's life, I realized that there was historical trauma that had occurred and it imprinted on her life how to raise children. When you're taken from a home, made to feel like you're not beautiful, and when they walk through town, the people spat on the ground, you dirty little Indian. My mother thought she wasn't worthy. I um, began to travel to schools and I began to offer some workshops because I wanted then, I wanted children to touch and feel. And so I brought basket weaving. This basket weaving that was shared with me with Marion walking stick and I took it on. Again, I wanted to teach all the teachers, but they just couldn't do it. So my family began to make these starts. One day when there was a hundred students in the auditorium, I was talking to the children and I was basket weaving. And it just was so clear that creator was speaking to me. This is you. And I'm basket weaving and talking to the children. I'm going me over under over under. Yes, and that's life over under. You have overs and you have unders. You spoke about it today, Noreen. You had your good memories and your struggling memories. And so I said, okay, it's over under. But then creator, as I laid my head on my pillow that night, he said, this right here is your relationship to me. So whatever your relationship is, whether however you understand your spiritual being, this is your prayer life. This is your meditation. This is your lighting the candle. So some days are like this. Now I've raised seven children and I have 18 grandchildren. Five of them are great. And you know how days are. Mother here, is this your only one? Well, can you imagine multiplying that by seven? And some days I'd wake up and, you know, I had packed the lunch the night before, things were, you know, laid out. I was having a great morning, but other days, oh, phone call, you've got to take me to the doctor. You know, you know, my, my son has broken his arm, I'm sure. And I've had to, you know, stop everything. And that's kind of like an under. And, you know, we get things settled out. The next day is, a, is a over. You know, my son gets chosen by Disneyland to offer his, uh, artistic ability. You know, we had some of you expressed your husband winning the award. That's an over. Um, and so we have over and unders, but no matter what we experience, if we hold on to this, and who will share with me what this is for you? Who out there can tell me what this is for you? For me, it's my daily prayer life. It's me getting up, beginning with prayer. It's me praying if some situation comes up. This is my weaver because I'm not just going to throw my life basket away. I'm going to hold on because my family's depending on him. This is my life. Is there anyone out there? There's dad. What's your, what's your, what's your weaver? Your child. Oh, okay. And when you speak to the spirituality of your life, you reach out with prayer, meditation. What do you reach out to? Ah, music, such a healing tool, isn't it? Such a healing tool. I'm going to pick you because you just look like you're right there with me. What is your weaver? Deep breaths and? Ah, excellent. And you know what? 
even when those days are going bad, you just keep breathing, you breathe, you meditate. <clears throat> Eventually, we get through. And you know what's beautiful about the basket? Because I feel like Creator gave this to me as my lesson, was if we hold on to what it is for me as my prayer life. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to drink a glass of water. <clears throat> We will eventually end up a vessel of service. So here's an example of the little basket. <coughs> no, ba all the baskets aren't this small, but you eventually become a vessel of service. Now, every one of these weaves in here represent a chapter in your life, a moment in your life, a struggle in your life. And when you use this as a vessel of service to the world, you take the best of who you are and you use it. And often we volunteer that. <clears throat> so the person that's back there running the computer, your gift is that technology and you're sharing it so that we can get a message out. Um, <clears throat> Paul, you're a greeter. Right away, you had a big old smile on your mouth. You know, just smiling. And I said, what a nice man. <laughs> you know? We don't all have the same gifts, do we? And um, <clears throat> we all use them according to whatever <clears throat> is needed. <clears throat> Apologize for that. So you go over and under and you tighten things up and you just keep weaving. And then you've got to add another, you know, weaver. And when you add another weaver, you know, it's not always easy. You know, maybe some of you have a short, prayer life to creator and if you do you got to use a whole bunch of these but if you're somebody who wakes up and immediately starts your day with meditation and focusing on the light that weaver turns to this right here and it carries you through all the ups and downs of a daily situation um <clears throat> so i'm just going to add this right like that. And I'm just going to keep weaving, but I'm going to tell you this, that as a teacher, do I have any teachers out there? I think I have one that is a professor at UC. I don't know if she's here or maybe she's in there with it. There you are. You know how those middle of the night things go and that thing you've been struggling on? Well, I was working with native uh, uh, children on the reservation and it seemed like their self-esteem was very low. And I kept saying, how am I going to reach the kids because i didn't ever grow up on the reservation i grew up in san juan capistrano i don't know what it's like to have that life you know things aren't accessible but in the middle of the night just as though it was the creator speaking to me i wrote some words down and i'm going to share them with you because i feel like these words are very powerful and they bring us back to a time when we were struggling, but we need to just stop and we need to go back to where life was calm. And you know how far I go back? And you do too, before the freeways, before the buildings, before uh, houses, when it was just your people in Europe or wherever your roots are from and my people whose roots are here. And so <clears throat> this is the way that this poem goes. And I'm going to you know, end this moment with that because I feel like in the pandemic, we learned how to slow down. I'm 69 years old and I don't remember a time in my life where I ever slowed down like I did with the pandemic. And my husband and I were looking eye to eye. And my husband was listening to me. Whoo! And he was interested. <laughs> and we were playing Monopoly, or we were playing one of our ancient games, you know, the, the walnut, the, the stave game. And I said, we are, we are doing what our ancestors did. We are taking time to hear the voice deep inside. And so I love that part of the pandemic. So the words go like this. 
We need to rise up early in the morning and look up and be grateful and thankful, just like our ancestors. We need to walk more, just like our ancestors. We need to eat what comes from Mother Earth, just like our ancestors. We need to teach our children. We need to be with our family close, so close, just like our ancestors. And at the end of the day, we need to rise up, go outside of our dwelling, look up at the stars in the sky with awe and wonderment, just like our ancestors. And know that we are called for a purpose. And that purpose started thousands of years ago. And we need to grab that and claim it and say, whatever creator has for me, I am ready. I am willing. And we need to really understand that one person, if listening to the universe creator, and for me, Jesus, we can walk in a different way and make a in our community and one person can make a difference so let that one person be you and in my language we may we say from a deep place in my heart i thank you Thank you, Jackie. Um, Jackie, will, Jackie will speak tribal blessing as we finish our service this morning. Um, that was that was really fun to listen to, Jackie. And we appreciate you for being here. Uh, our closing hymn this morning is Mother Earth, Beloved Garden. It's uh, hymn number 1067. Please join me with Mother Earth and the Love Garden.
Thank you, Carol. Our benediction this morning will be a tribal blessing that Jackie has written. As I shared earlier with the children that my people, we, we use copper sticks made from elderberry and it kept the heartbeat. And I'm gonna share a song that um, I wrote. And I, you know, so many of our things have been lost and thank goodness a lot of them have been buried. And so we are unearthing those. But I'm gonna sing um, one and at the end, I'm gonna sing sort of a joyful one too, but this one is creator, we thank you. We worship you. We love you. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, we each do. Oh, 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 Na ho hom pa, na ho hom pa, na ho hom pa lo, na chaya, eh ya, ta ha ha, tu o hom na, na chaya, ta ha ha ho. Beautiful creator, we thank you. Beautiful creator, in all we do, we give our hearts to you. And we say, we love you. We give our hearts to you. Precious one, creator. Hmm. Matui, yo, well, to di da di ba, i che ma ha. Yo, po, we, yo, ha, ha, ya, ya, I was wondering. He he ile chalu ya mi po mi po we e yo po we yo we yo po we e yo na ho na ya asha amam na tu e yo well tu di da di va i che maha let that sweet soft wind touch your face until we see each other again om palo. Thank you. We extinguish the chalice. And we thank you for coming today. We stand for our closing song let there be peace on earth so for those of you who have not been here before we used to hold hands but we distance ourselves a little bit and make lots of eye contact <laughs>
Tchau!